Thank you very much. Thank you. And good afternoon from Ireland. And I'm so pleased to see so many of you that we did meet in Korea. And that was only last February. And it's very hard to imagine how the world has changed since that time. And all because of COVID. I mean, it's certainly in my lifetime, I have never seen anything that equaled the impact of COVID-19, not a war, tsunami, 9-11 or other disasters, that this has been a truly global impact all over the world. Um, what, and I say that, that is the thing as has, has been said before by others, it is one of the things that COVID has shown us, how totally interdependent we are, that we all share this small planet and that really the virus has made no distinction between rich or poor, north or south, east or west. It, some of the wealthiest countries, in fact, like the, the US, has been one of the hardest hit countries in the world, and Britain isn't very far behind. So hopefully, in actually recognising that, if something good is to come out of this experience, is that we, we will recognise more that we are all bound together, and that what is in the interest of one is, is in the interest of all. I think that would that would certainly be a big help. That and and looking forward that it will be it will make a, a difference in international relations. Uh, another thing is to say that this virus has shown us. I think is the need for our leaders to show truth, honesty, frankness, and openness with people. And and I think people have where they have responded best is where their leaders have given them the real facts based on scientific and medical information. And that these countries that have done that, the citizens have bought into the very difficult but necessary um, measures that have been taken. Whereas in countries where there are far more mixed messages, where some people have been giving downright, you know, telling untruths and in, in wanting to make it disappear, the virus disappear on its own, that this just hasn't worked. And I think that, again, it should be hopefully an ongoing lesson that if, if we want citizens to, to follow, um, as I say, a, a difficult regime, they, knew, they do need to understand the solutions and be given a clear and unambiguous pathway as to how to get there and why. Again, it's certainly true that countries that moved quickly had the best results. I mean, look at Taiwan, Singapore, Korea. Japan, New Zealand, and I think it, moving forward, and I am trying to look more forwards than backwards. I mean, I, I think we all understand, you know, the horrendous impact it has had, but, you know, trying to look for what we can learn from it and looking forward, that um, I do think the World, the world Health Organization needs to be, you know, um, strengthened so that it can get, respond more quickly and more forcefully and more directly when, and it, it, it is when the next pandemic happens, not if. I, I mean, I firmly believe that this is the start of something that we're going to see much more of. Again, one of the heartening things that came out of this crisis, I believe, is what has been the resilience, adaptability, the power of individuals and very small communities. I mean, in I, Ireland is a small country anyway, and you know everybody has been more or less kept at home, very much in their own community, and the the innovation, the the selflessness, the people helping each other, looking out for each other, the the power of each individual, you know, hand hygiene, social distancing, things that we all can control for ourselves, has been has giving people a sense of power but also innovation adaptability and i think shown maybe the best qualities that we have and you know people have adapted to you know a whole range of of new practices working from home and um, wearing face masks which i think i always find difficult if you can't see somebody smile at you and that's uh, we miss out but still we adjust and adapt because we, we need to as I say, helping neighbours. Again, industry, I know in Ireland anyway, has been remarkable in that, you know, a lot of small companies out of, out of the blue um, 
start diverted from their usual thing to manufacture PPEs, personal protection equipment, you know, some solutions, sanitizers, antibacterial soaps, a whole range of different things that were needed at the time. And they did that voluntarily without being asked or forced to do so. As I say, it showed a, a huge just sense of um, uh, community, but responsibility to the community as well. And I would like to think that, you know, businesses in the future can that can be tapped in again so say for other issues like environmental issues that 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 can be that sense of responsibility can be used again um i i do think you know look, looking forward that you know life has changed forever i mean traveling airports um all, all that kind of thing i mean we can never go back to the way things used to be done so, and I, I do think there is a real need for um, not only the World Health Organization to, you know, be strengthened and, and brought up to date, but to much better research into what is likely to come down the tracks at us. And also th that there should be, you know, global depots for things like personal protective equipment i know there was a, a huge problem worldwide initially trying to get that trying to get solutions for the testing all those kind of things. there should be stores of those and hopefully that we will learn from these things and put those those um measures in place so that the next the next time that it happens or whatever happens that we won't we won't be so slow to to catch up with it but you know uh, the measures that we that have been you know, proven so far to work, can't last indefinitely. You know, economies have to function. Children have to be educated, they have to go to school, they have to socialize. So lockdown isn't a viable op option in the long term. But I think we, if we relax measures, but in a planned and monitored way that continued testing, that in the future, hopefully, targeted lockdowns will be all that is required and not huge global ones like like we have been doing up until now there's as a another positive that and, and, and i know the the um, former first lady of palau that dr moon read her speech was referring to the environment and and i do think one of the positives of all of this has shown that has been the effects on the environment that the diminishing uh, emissions and and the lifestyle changes and hopefully these are things that will be ongoing. Like, look at us here today doing a webinar instead of all congregating someplace, having flown maybe halfway around the world to get there. So I think there will be an awareness of that in both business. We're a little, we're running a little bit late. I think I have to, is it possible you could maybe? Uh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Sorry, did I go on too long? There's, there's, no, I just wanted to say anyway, that, that I do think a power to, apart from the negatives, there are positives, we must learn to, to work together and to be in a truthful, open and honest way. And look, I'd like to thank you, to, uh, uh, Dr. Julia Moon and, and, and Dr. Walsh and the Women's Federation for World Peace for facilitating this. And hopefully it's only a small step in what will be a bigger and ongoing global cooperation. Thank you.